Hey everyone, Kyle Erickson here. Over the last couple of years, foldables have slowly increased in popularity, and I think we're finally hitting a point where they're becoming less of a novelty and more something that people can use legitimately every day. That is definitely the case with the phone that I have here today. This is the Find and to Flip, the latest foldable phone from Oppo. I've been using this for a couple of weeks and having a flip phone like this has actually changed the way that I use my phone in a few different ways that I hadn't even thought of before using this. Today, I wanna to dive into all the cool little things about using this foldable display, but also just looking at the staples of a regular phone, like performance, cameras, battery life, and all that good stuff and if this can stack up as a legit flagship device. So if you're curious about the Find N2 Flip or foldables in general, or you may be considering picking one up, stick around and let's get into it. So this phone really impressed me visually right from the beginning. The packaging is super interesting in the way that the box opens totally on brand with that whole fold theme, and the phone itself is pretty unique as well. The model that I have here is black, the other color option is purple, it's got this textured matte finish on the base with a polished metal finish around the edges, where on the right you'll find a power button that doubles as a fingerprint reader, and just above that are volume controls. There's a bit of a bezel around the front foldable display, and I do like that that bezel is this matte black color. It's just a little bit more distinctive to me and something different that we're not used to seeing, which is a pretty common theme for this phone. On the back, you've got this monster 3.26 inch display, which is kind of crazy to think about considering older iPhones were three and a half inches, so almost the same size as this. Now that screen adds a lot of functionality to the foldable aspect of this phone, which we'll get into in a bit. But my favorite thing design-wise is the hinge. When you start to fold the phone, the hinge shows with this brushed metal wavy look that makes the design pop a little bit more and gives off a more premium feel. And the hinge mechanism itself is very sturdy and feels well built. It's easy enough to open and close with one hand and you don't get any play anywhere. And the one thing that I like about this versus the mechanism in something like the Samsung Galaxy Z Flip 4 is the actual crease in the display is a lot less noticeable. The Samsung Flips that I've tried have a more noticeable dip or groove when you're using the display, just going over it with your finger. You can still feel it in the Oppo a touch, but it is less noticeable and visually you can't see any difference where the surface changes. The front display is a 1080 by 2520 foldable AMOLED screen with a 21 to 9 ratio and HDR10 plus and a whopping 1200 nits brightness and high brightness mode with a peak of 1600 nits. If I stick it beside my iPhone 14 Pro, which is one of, if not the brightest displays out there, it is very similar. Because it does get so bright, super easy to view in daylight, now the picture is fantastic, there's great color, that 120 hertz refresh rate makes everything very smooth with motion and scrolling, and the only time that crease is visible at all is when you're viewing at pretty steep angles. Near the top of the display you've got a pinhole camera cutout for the front facing camera which is a 32 megapixel f2.8 lens that I'm assuming is the same lens that's in the Oppo Reno 8 Pro. Actually if you look at the camera system in both the Reno 8 Pro which I have here and the Find N2 Flip, they're pretty much the same. They both have the 50 megapixel Sony IMX 890 lenses on the main camera that are in a bunch of flagship devices and an eight megapixel ultra wide lens. The N2 Flip doesn't have a macro lens like the Reno 8 Pro does, which is fine by me given that that was only two megapixels, but the Flip has a whole host of other features built into the software that you're not gonna find on almost any other phone. The camera UI upon first glance does look very similar to other apps, but you can see this little icon in the upper left corner and that will allow you to use your front display as a viewfinder, so you can take selfies or record yourself with a main camera without having to guess what it looks like on the other side, which is a great use case for that outer display. Another thing with that camera app, when you bend the phone, the UI will move around so that the viewfinder isn't bent around the fold, and you can see the whole image on a flat surface. Now this is great if you're recording yourself for social media or doing something where you need to prop your phone up. I've had a lot of fun with this, just setting it on a table and panning around objects or products myself, but it does add to the overall versatility of the camera. The other aspect of this camera worth noting is that Oppo did partner with Hasselblad on this phone. So as far as imaging processing goes, see more of those Hasselblad colors, which to me have a really nice look to them. The colors are a lot more pleasant than you'll find on a lot of other Android devices, which can tend to be extremely oversaturated. It does a good job of bringing out color without it getting to the point where it feels unnatural. The 50 megapixel lens takes great photos. There's a lot of detail and sharpness throughout the entire image. 
and you do get pretty decent depth of field at times, even without using this in portrait mode. In portrait mode, you get a nice blur and depth of field effect, and as a whole, the main camera system is flagship quality. That 8 megapixel ultra wide lens, not so much. I think for a device of this caliber, I'd like to see a higher end lens there with at least 12 megapixels. With this 8 megapixel lens, it stays reasonably sharp in the center of the image, but it really tails off when you get to the edges. It's definitely one of the weak spots in this phone. There's also some flaring issues on these lenses if you get in direct sunlight or at night and you're at the right angle beside a bright light. This isn't an issue just limited to this phone though. iPhones are also really bad for this, but it is something that you occasionally have to watch out for. Night mode does work fantastic most of the time. Pictures again are clean and sharp and the combination of that fold, the outer display and the camera software makes this a lot more versatile in low light. On the video side of things, again, the picture on that main sensor is super clear. You get 4K at 30 frames per second. If you drop down to 1080p, you can get 60 frames per second and a depth of field effect on your video where it will blur your background. And I was pretty impressed with that. If you're an iPhone user, this is very similar to cinematic mode. The only thing to note with that is you can't use the back display as a viewfinder when the depth effect is enabled for whatever reason. I'm not sure if this has something to do with the processing power required or what, but it's just something to note. You can also use the main camera when this is completely folded through the outer screen as well by swiping over on it. You've got a few different options in here, not a lot, but enough that if you want to snap a quick photo or a video, you can do it without opening up your phone. That outer screen has a fair amount of functionality in it. It primarily acts as sort of like a mini always on display where you'll see the current time, notifications, and if you swipe through it beyond the camera, you'll see the weather calendar and timer widgets by default. That screen is fully customizable through ColorOS 13, which honestly has been great for me. Historically, there has been a little bit of bloat at times with ColorOS and Oppo products, but I don't get that sense in this particular phone. Uh, there's loads of customizable options for that outer screen to themes and fonts within the phone. There's a bunch of options in relation to how you use your phone and how you use the foldable aspect of it. You can set up an always on display on the main screen for when you leave your phone unfolded. And everything has felt very snappy and well thought out with the UI. Part of the phone being so snappy is due to the performance. The Find N2 Flip comes packed with a Dimensity 9000 Plus chipset with 256 gigs of storage and eight gigs of RAM. This is an extremely powerful chipset. The Reno 8 Pro kind of won me over with the Dimensity chips, but if you're into benchmarks, I ran Geekbench and the 3D Mark Wildlife Extreme tests in high performance mode. And it does outperform both the Samsung Galaxy Z Flip 4 and the 2022 Moto Razr, which I'd say are this phone's biggest competitors. With gaming, things run incredibly smooth regardless of the game. And there's a little tab that you can see on the edge of the screen that you can slide out, and that will bring up this hyperboost menu where you can see your frame rate, adjust your power mode, record your screen, and a few other things to personalize your gaming experience. I've tried this out with multiple games, no complaints there, and if you're playing games online, the Wi-Fi built into the N2 Flip is solid as well. This supports Wi-Fi 6, and just like most other Oppo phones that I've tried, I get the best network speeds out of any other devices that I've tested, better than the iPhone 14 Pro, which is nice considering the wired connection speeds are fairly slow on this phone. The N2 Flip does only have USB 2.0. I'm not sure how many people are transferring large files to and from their device, but it would have been nice maybe that was a little bit higher with at least USB 3.0 speeds, but for your average user, this isn't likely gonna be something that you're too concerned about. That USB-C port is the only option that you have for charging, so no wireless charging on here, but Oppo does provide a charger in the box, which we see less and less of these days. The Chinese version, I think, is a 44 watt charger, where the global version that they provide you here is 67 watts. Now, I do have the global version, which has this European plug on it, so I can't effectively charge this with the designated charger but I do have this Ugreen 140 watt GAN charger that I use with all my Android and Apple devices that will charge at the highest available wattage most of the time. I absolutely love this thing and I will link it in the description for anyone that's interested, but this phone does charge incredibly quickly. The battery is 4,300 milliamp hours. So again, for a flip phone like this, that's way above what you'll usually find. And the overall battery life is outstanding. I get around seven hours of screen on time, running games, benchmarks, browsing the web and using social media. 
so it can definitely last you a full day and carry into the next with average usage. With that quick charger, it takes me about 45 minutes or so to go from low battery to 100%, so even with a lack of wireless charging, it doesn't take too long to top this up. I found that with a combination of the bigger battery and how I use this phone, I've generally had to charge it a lot less frequently. Using a flip phone like this is just such a different experience, like, sure, it is kind of nostalgic if you ever used flip phones back in the day, but I do think that that single flip action lends itself to making more of a distinction between your phone being in an active and inactive state. What I mean by that is usually we have our phones out, maybe you pick it up because you get a notification, and since your phone is open, you start browsing around, where on the end to flip, when I close my phone, it's closed. Just that one extra action makes it harder for me to go from a notification into a social app or something. And if I want to go into the app, I've got to make the physical action to put my phone into another state. And I think it's actually resulted in less screen time for me overall. Beyond that, I love the extra features that this phone provides, like using the back display as a viewfinder so you can use the main camera more, and just being able to bend the phone and sit at a desk to take pictures or video. Sure, there are some things I think could be better. That ultra wide lens, I really would like to see get upgraded. Maybe a higher USB speed and wireless charging, but overall, I think this is a super powerful phone. It's got a great display and great battery life. I am gonna continue to use this phone more and test it out, so we'll see what it's like as we go along, but in the couple of weeks that I've had it now, it's been really solid. I would love to know what you think of this phone and foldables in general. Do you have one? Do you want one? And what are some of the form factors that you're interested in with foldables? Drop a comment down below and let me know, along with anything that you'd like to know about this phone for future videos. As always, if you did enjoy this video, feel free to hit that like button if you want to see more tech related content, or if you want to wear white shirts and eat spaghetti and meatballs with me and see what can last the longest without staining them, please subscribe. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next upload.